Hi there, this is Kenny with Structured Solutions. In my last video, I talked about the correct way to status tasks in Microsoft Project. And I walked through a whole bunch of different scenarios that you're likely to run into when you start taking status on tasks in your own projects. During that video, I talked a little bit about the difference between the physical percent complete column and the regular percent complete column in Project. In this video, I want to talk a little bit more about why those columns are different and why it's okay if you have a different value in the physical percent complete column than what you're seeing in the regular percent complete column. Okay, here I am in Microsoft Project and I have a really simple example project that I've created. It has three tasks, task A, B, and C. Let's pretend that I'm working with my team to update the schedule to the current status state. So I've gone ahead and inserted some columns into the Gantt chart view that would be necessary for me to do that, such as actual start, actual finish, these columns right here, remaining duration. But for today's video, what I want to focus on are these columns here, physical percent complete and regular percent complete. Let's talk about what the difference between these two fields even is and why Microsoft Project gives us both of them. Let's start with the percent complete field. So what this field represents is the percentage of the task total duration that has actually passed since the task actually started. So it's completely based on duration and nothing else. Nothing else factors into that calculation. That's why oftentimes you may hear people refer to this field as the duration based percent complete. What's most important for you to understand about the regular percent complete column in Microsoft Project is that if a value is entered into it, other fields on the same task are going to be affected and vice versa. So there are certain other fields that you can alter on a task that will affect the percent complete field, such as actual start, actual finish, or actual duration. Because of this, you never want to manually enter a value in the percent complete field. Instead, you want to let Microsoft Project calculate that for you on your tasks by using the Mark on Track button after you've worked with your team to figure out the new start and finish dates of the task. Let's focus on task B for a second. Right now, task B has a percent complete of zero. Let me just show you what happens when I change this percent complete from zero to, say, 15. Notice that as soon as I enter that 15%, a value was automatically put into the actual duration, remaining duration, and actual start fields for me by project. Also notice over here on the Gantt chart, there's a progress bar that's running through the task now that's representing the percent complete. Let me set the percent complete for task B back to zero and just show you that if I were to change, say, the actual duration on this task, from zero to one, that Microsoft Project is automatically going to calculate a value for percent complete on task B. Now again, the proper way to get the percent complete for this task would be to neither enter in a value in the percent complete column or in the actual duration column. Instead, what we would wanna do is work with our team members to adjust the start and finish dates of this task to whatever they think that they're going to be and then use the mark on track button up here. I discussed this in more detail in my last video, how to correctly status tasks in Microsoft Project. So if you're interested in learning more about that, check that video out. But just to quickly recap, and let me undo this here. So I'm gonna set the percent complete back to zero. What I would do to properly status this task is just ask my team members the question, hey, when did this task start? Or when do you think it's going to start? And when do you think it's going to finish or did it actually finish? And they'll give me some updated information here. Let's just pretend that they say that it did start on March 1st, but it's not going to finish until March 7th, for example. Well, now I've adjusted my start and finish dates here and I can go and use the button that says mark on track to get the percent complete calculated for the task for me. And as you can see in this particular example, Microsoft Project calculated that the percent complete is 60%. The reason for that is because the task total duration is five days 
And from the point that the task started up through our status date, three days of actual duration have occurred. So those three days are in the past. That leaves us with two days remaining. Well, three days is 60% of this total five day duration. Okay, so now we understand regular percent complete in Microsoft Project. Let's talk about physical percent complete. What exactly is that? Well, first I need to tell you that the physical percent complete field in a lot of real world projects is going to be used to represent the earned value of a task. If you're not familiar with what earned value is, it's just a way of reporting progress on a project as it progresses through time, and it's required by a lot of larger contracts. In earned value projects, there are certain rules that will instruct the program team what they can actually enter in the physical percent complete field and when they can enter it. For the sake of this video, I'm not going to be taking into consideration any earned value reporting requirements or rules when talking about physical percent complete. So just wanna make sure that you're aware of that before I go on and talk about what physical percent complete is and how you can use it. Also, I know some people may be part of an organization that has their own internal rules and processes regarding physical percent complete, even for non-earned value schedules. And again, for this video, I'm not going to be taking any of that into consideration. Okay, so with that said, physical percent complete is the assessed percent complete of the task, meaning it's how far along the project team or person or persons responsible for doing the task think that it is. And there are no fields in project that you can adjust that will affect the value in physical percent complete, unlike regular percent complete. The only way to get a value in the physical percent complete field is to manually enter it. And for physical percent complete, this is perfectly okay because entering a value here is not going to affect anything else, any other fields on the task. It's also important to understand that the value in the physical percent complete field can be different than the value in the regular percent complete field. And there are totally valid reasons why this may be the case. Okay, so let's pretend that I'm still statusing task B with my team members. I've already gone through and I figured out the updated start and finish dates for this task, and I used the mark on track button to get my regular percent complete. Now, before I move on to the next task, I wanna ask another question, and that's how far along do we think that we're done with the task from your perspective, or the perspective of whoever whatever person or team is responsible for doing this task. And they may give us a number that's different than the regular percent complete. Let's say that they say the task, we think we're 50% done with the task, in which case I would plug the number 50 in there, and that's all I need to do. Notice that after I entered this number, none of these other fields were affected for task B. And that's because physical percent complete is just a static field. It's the assessed percent complete. It's solely based on the perspective of the people who are responsible for doing the task or who have the technical expertise about the task. There are no fields in Microsoft Project that can adjust physical percent complete. The only thing that can adjust it is our own manual entry. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, Kenny, shouldn't the physical percent complete and the regular percent complete really be the same? I mean, in this scenario, we're 60% through the task duration but the people who have the technical expertise about the tasks are telling us that it's only 50% done. So shouldn't we adjust the remaining duration so that the regular percent complete is the same as the physical percent complete? And the answer is not necessarily. There are a lot of legit reasons why the assessed percent complete of a task might be different than the duration-based percent complete of a task. Let me just give you an example. So I'm gonna undo this. And so let's just say for task B, again, we have different values for physical percent complete and duration percent complete. Let's just say that the people who are responsible for doing it in the first three days that the task has been in work, they've spent not that many hours working on it. And in the remaining two days, they're gonna up the amount of time, the amount of hours that they actually spend on the task and therefore they still think that they can finish it by the 7th. So if the task started on the 1st and the team still thinks that they're gonna be able to finish it by the 7th, well, 
the regular duration based percent complete is 60 and it still may be perfectly valid for the team to think for their own from their own perspective that they're only 50% done with the task. Now, this doesn't mean that we can't ask the question. For example, I could ask my team, well, if you think you're only 50% done with the task, should I adjust the finish date? Should I make it a later date? And let's just pretend that they say, no, 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 no. We're gonna be able to finish it by the seventh. In which case, this is totally legit to have a different value for regular percent complete and physical percent complete. If you're not the actual person with the technical expertise about the task or the person who's responsible for managing the task, then you should not be making any assumptions about how you should adjust the finish dates or the physical percent complete without actually consulting the team who is responsible for it or who does have the technical expertise. Now, this doesn't mean that even if we are talking with the people who are responsible for the tasks, that we should just take their word on everything without asking any additional questions. Because sometimes they will tell us some things that don't actually make sense. For example, this task right here, they might have told me this finish date, the 7th, which is giving me a 60% duration-based percent complete, but then when I ask them what's their assessment of how far along they think the task is, they might say, well, I, I think I'm only 5% done with the task. Well, now this kind of doesn't make that much sense that the task is 60% done through its duration, but we think we're only 5%. It would mean a lot of work has to occur within these last two days that the task is scheduled to be worked. So again, the way that we're gonna resolve this is is we just have to go back to the person or persons responsible for task B, and we need to say, hey, this 5% right here, are you sure that that's the number that you want because the finish date is March 7th? And that doesn't really make a lot of sense. I think you need to adjust that finish date to be a later date. And they might say, oh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, I didn't mean to, to give you that finish date of March 7th. In fact, I meant for the finish date to be March 15th. So then you go and you adjust the finish date to be whatever date that they give to you. Bottom line is that if we're not the person who's actually responsible for doing this task and have the technical expertise about the task, then the only way for us to know what to put in the physical percent complete field and whether or not that number is legit is to find the person or persons who are responsible and who do have the technical expertise and just make sure that we ask them those questions. With all that said, I wanna mention two things that should always be true about physical percent complete. And that's that on tasks that are 100% done, they're in the past, they've completed, the physical percent complete should also be 100. And tasks that have not started, tasks that are 0%, the physical percent complete should also be zero. We should not be saying that we're in progress with a task that hasn't actually started. Last thing that I wanna talk about in regards to physical percent complete is why even enter any numbers in it at all? You know, what use is physical percent complete to us? And really what physical percent complete is, is it's just another data point that the project can use, the project team can use to evaluate their performance as the project progresses through time. And that data, again, can be used by the project manager or other project stakeholders in a lot of different ways. Our job is really to provide information to the project team so they can make decisions. And this is just another data point that they can use that will aid them in making those decisions for the project. So now you know all about the differences between the regular percent complete and the physical percent complete fields in Microsoft Project and how you can use those two fields when you're actually statusing your tasks up to the status date. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and found it to be helpful. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. That way you'll know anytime we release a new video. I hope to see you soon.